Eight o'clock by my watch, and, uh, and uh, yeah, I want to welcome each one of you. And uh, we're going to do intros in a little bit, but until then, if you want, go ahead and mute your phone. Uh, that way, you can, uh, I have to back anything like that. So, folks, just mute your phones. How do we mute our phones? Uh, you have a mute button on it, like uh, you know, physically there. I can do it on my side, but uh, you would uh, um, ability on your own hey, phone. Okay, I think I found it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't realize that phones are. Um, and uh, by the way, uh, get used to, uh, we'll have the go to meeting here, and uh, this will be our format. You'll be using this for the entire year. Uh, so if you have any questions about this, uh, a couple of things that I found is helpful is that uh, sometimes uh, if you have another open program uh, in your uh, computer, like uh, you have a clipping uh, program, you know, that you use to maybe uh, clip uh, things from the website or it's an independent one uh, that you use. Sometimes it is resident in memory and it conflicts with uh, GoToMeeting. Uh, you get kind of a uh, uh, kind of a shaky thing going on. So sometimes uh, you may need to make programs uh, if you run into a problem. Uh, and uh, we basically will record this, uh, these sessions. Uh, it will take, uh, it takes a while. What happens is uh, uh, I'm re my uh, my home, uh, just like the wherever you are, most of you probably are. Some of you may be at work, but uh, after the sessions are over, after the recording of the is finished, is it has to convert the recording into a format that can be played, uh, you know, uh, on in a, like an MP4 uh, type of player, uh, anything that you normally would be able to use. And it takes a while to convert. So what happens then after it's converted, I transfer it over. It's a very large file over to NGS, and they will put a link into the portal so you have a capability to listen to the recording. Uh, if you missed something tonight or, you know, as uh, we mentioned before, if you have an opportunity that, uh, uh, you know, uh, to go to a job interview or you have to take the kids someplace or you're going to be uh, at work or you're driving, we certainly want you to have you distracted, but you'll have the capability to review the webinar. and. Uh, there will be always, if you miss a, session, a, a webinar, if you would, let me know ahead of time that you're not going to be able to make it. And uh, there is then, there's always kind of like a question that we have embedded in the webinar that uh, uh, after you review it, uh, you'll post a response, let us know that you've been able to uh, uh, catch the, uh, the webinar recording and, and have been able to go through it because it's really an important aspect that, that we'll talk about. And uh, so uh, if there's anything at all, this, this course really is a, it has a couple of first aims to it. it. It's going to be getting you used to the NGS you know, technology and the uh, teaching approach, and uh, we're going to uh, be sure you're comfortable with that as well. So for those of you that uh, missed the orientation we had last week, which uh, I know uh, some of you sent some emails, of, you know, you were unable to make that. Uh, Fear not, you will be able to go through pretty much uh, many of the similar type of things, maybe a little bit more in depth uh, tonight. And then if you have any questions, that's really the purpose of this course, is that be sure that uh, you're able to uh, kind of see this. And uh, many of you have different reasons for joining this course. I, I bet if we go around, and we are in a minute, and I want you to think about that, is to talk about a little bit about where you are and that type of thing, but also any expectations from the course. And, some of you are here because you love quality. This is your field. You got professional backgrounds. We've got folks that I've, you know, seen that. Uh, uh, some of you have black belts and uh, really have really an extensive amount of knowledge about the quality of profession and uh, how to apply that. And there are many of you that maybe have zero. Uh, that uh, you have no idea if we were to start talking in code with CPK or you know Demaic or any of the other things we talk about, and that's fine. In fact. That will be one of the things that we find that's really kind of enriching uh, in this course is the diversity of students. So each of you probably has a different motivation uh, for here, uh, which you'd like to get out of the course. I'd like to hear a little bit about that. Uh, but you're about to have a common experience. Uh, you know, we're going to uh, go 
basically uh, through the process. Uh, we have a lot of team uh, type of activities that we are dependent upon. And the purpose of addition gets you used to the technology and how do we do the teaching approach uh, is to give you the long view. In other words, uh, where are you getting into? You know, you're here, you signed up for it, it looks like it's a good thing, that's why you, you signed up for the course. But I want to also try to provide as much as I can uh, about what you're going to go through. The, the courses, the sequence, uh, and everything will happen between now and next year, uh, about the same time when you're finishing up your degrees, you're doing your final briefs, and uh, going through not only what the courses will be and the approaches we have, is also maybe some of your own expectations about degrees. I will find that the courses I teach with students, uh, they usually get some surprises. Uh, they get some things out of this course that they didn't anticipate. So I'll share with you uh, the experiences that I've had uh, with NGS students and uh, I've been teaching uh, for NGS for a while, and so I've mentioned uh, during the orientation, maybe, I don't know how many teams I've been toward, maybe over 200 student teams, maybe more than that, uh, in the time that I've had. And so I have a pretty good feel for what you're going to go through. And uh, going through what the students have said, and I'll try to relay that to you as well. Uh, as we go through the webinar, uh, and we have, you know, uh, Basically, I'll, I'll feed forward. There's some things on the slides to talk about, talk about this. But feel free to ask questions. Uh, and we kind of would like to have a, a dialogue. And we really want to be sure you're comfortable about this course, uh, this approach, this degree program. And uh, because uh, as you're going to go through this commitment and, uh, uh, and understanding those uh, things that uh, are going to be important for your success, uh, and so we welcome your questions and your inquiries about this and that that we may approach you uh, with. And so uh, hopefully you have the slides up ahead of you. I'll uh, go through there. There may be some modifications as we go through, by the way, uh, in the future, is that uh, sometimes I will include in the slides uh, that are in the course materials uh, additional information. I might, uh, for instance, if you have a discussion question, there's a lot of topics in there that we'll talk about that in the moment, how you do discussion questions, but sometimes uh, there is uh, things that we're, I want to draw out from lessons that you shared, uh, and I may embed them into the uh, course material for the next time, so there may be some modification, or if you have particular topics you would like to cover uh, as we go to week to week, we can tailor that. We have that capability to, uh, you know, hey, I really want to kind of talk about this aspect, uh, and so sometimes I might even uh, add additional things into the course material. Uh, for that. So uh, I'll give you a notice uh, if there are changes to that. Uh, so sometimes uh, right before class I might get the, you know, everything pulled together and then say, hey, there may be some modifications. If you always use the ones that are in the, uh, or have the ones that are in the portal, uh, you'll be in good shape. And these are typically uh, uh, ones that if you have those, you you'll, won't miss any of the, the key points or the, or the assignment type of information. Uh, and you want to look at the slides as well as the syllabus, and I'm going to cover all that with you tonight. So, um, the uh, uh, slides that we have, uh, let me move forward here, get back onto this. This is my uh, contact information. This is a one that's not probably on your side, but that's, uh, uh, if you need to get a hold of me. Uh, I, like uh, most of you, are working adults, uh, and uh, I am currently working in the Pentagon, and I'm actually in a place at times where I don't have a cell phone. And there are certain places that, well, you don't get reception. And other places, well, you don't have to have a cell phone during the day. And so I usually will try to uh, reply, you know, if you send me a text or a message, uh, uh, you know, within 24 hours. But I may not be readily available if you're trying to call me on an assignment and you need the answer right away. Uh, that may be because uh, I may not be in contact with uh, or have the ability to make a phone call. The other thing uh, is uh, my email. Is usually I can I can read that normally. I can uh, I can uh, check that throughout the day. Uh, so if you got a question and want to set up a phone call, uh, do that. Uh, I am in uh, Northern Virginia, uh, by the way. Uh, I am in uh, Eastern Time Zone, and for every class that we have, everything that we will schedule later, we'll do. Uh, mentoring sessions where there may be flexibility. Uh, we'll always use uh, U.S. Uh, Eastern Time. 
and we're on daylight saving time for, for those maybe out of the country. And it, within that uh, is then uh, we will uh, uh, basically look at putting together teams. And one of our big considerations is <laughs> which time zone you're in. So uh, when you have team meetings, uh, we'll be covering how those things and those activities go. But uh, it'll be good when we do our introductions, let us know where you are and if you, uh, what time zone you might be in. Uh, that later on would be helpful. And I'm going to ask if you haven't already, uh, go to the orientation uh, portal, uh, the first class we have, and be sure you got your bio in there. Information about, a little bit about yourself. Uh, if you haven't posted already, please do so. Uh, and include particularly your, your work uh, that you may have, uh, what type of things you do. We're going to ask you to verbally provide that. And then also your any other information that you want to share with the future uh, faculty. What occurs is that we take the information that's in the orientation that you post in there, uh, and then we each faculty you will have uh, as they go through, you'll have a variety of different faculty, is that they, they consult that and kind of look at your bios so there'll be information there that uh, about your teams later on and that type of thing. So the orientation then kind of becomes uh, a repository for bios and information to the students that we share with all the rest of the faculty that we'll be teaching you. So please, if you haven't already, uh, post in there and then get to know your fellow students uh, because uh, we're going to have that common experience. And uh, so if there's a, uh, there's going to be a learning agreement, we'll talk about that in a moment. And let me ask before we kind of go into any of those slides and some of the other introductions, does anyone have any questions uh, right at the top that you would like to ask? Uh, Yes, uh, Professor? Yes. Um, I just have one question. By the end of class today, or will this happen sometime next week, um, will we be kind of assign our cohorts? Or are you going to kind of allow the um, experiences uh, and, and kind of make the recommendations? Will that come from you all? Yeah. Uh, actually, we're going to cover that in uh, much further detail starting tonight. And uh, the answer, short answer is no. Uh, there will be some teams that you'll be formed into tentatively during this course. And uh, we're going to talk about how the projects are selected and, as well as the teams. And so over this first course, and you're going to have me also for the second course that you have. And, and the reason we have that is so that we start to figure out, uh, one, your preferences, what type of projects that may be out there. Uh, there's going to be a discussion about uh, uh, what the clarified so you understand what the, the different projects that may be nominated. Uh, and then your preferences are going to be a big play into that. And then also we look at the logistical aspects. And we try to also balance the, the, the teams that we're working on these projects uh, in a way that you have kind of strengths and weaknesses that complement each other. So there's a lot that goes into that. And so uh, this session that we have, uh, begins that journey. And um, we're going to talk about what makes a good project, uh, how we'll go about that selection process. And at the last week of this, then we really will start to uh, help uh, determine those those candidate projects and, and the teams that you'll be in. And uh, then we will go through and kind of uh, ensure that uh, you're comfortable with that, that we have a good uh, set of projects that will meet the school's requirements as well as your uh, maybe uh, work requirements. And then uh, we'll really kind of gel that by the second course, at least try to. Uh, so if that was your question, that, that would be, uh, you know, which way we're headed. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. I, it, it, whenever you, you uh, ask a question, until we kind of get to know each other, uh, particularly your voices and such, uh, could you, you know, uh, when you first come on, come up, include your name? My apologies, Larry Spicer. Okay, thanks, Spicer. Okay. That answer your question? Yes, sir. All right. Good. Anybody else have any other uh, questions of what you think could be a general nature? Okay. If you see the chat down there, uh, you can uh, send a message in here. If you just click it on, you can send it to another individual in the course, or you can send it to me. Uh, so you have capability to do that uh, in regards to uh, asking questions. If you're on and you think of something uh, you want to ask, put it in the chat room. 
Now, it's a little tough sometimes uh, for the faculty because we're kind of multitasking here. I'm looking at the slides. I'm trying to figure out what we need to say and then checking the, uh, the chat room. Uh, so that always, uh, then, you know, if I don't have my attention to that, say, hey, you know, check the chat room or, you know, can, can you answer the question we have there? And uh, uh, that's another uh, good te technique when we do the webinars. Okay. Let me just uh, kind of get started. And I'm going to uh, basically <coughs> uh, uh, ask each one of you just for about a moment, uh, one minute, uh, go around the room and kind of introduce yourselves. Uh, let me first uh, kind of start with this. Um, my background, as I mentioned, I've been with NDS, been a uh, professor with them for a number of years. Uh, I've taught almost all the courses you're about to go through. Uh, but more importantly, I think I have put to use just about every course that you're going to uh, uh, have in this degree program. And so uh, I'm, uh, I like to think of myself as a quality professional. This is what I do. Uh, put uh, beanie weenies on the table and, you know, keeps, uh, keeps my wife and, uh, happy with the roof over the house. And uh, I, I started actually in quality a long time ago. Uh, I was in actually in the Army, kind of not normally kind of correlate. You know, think of, you know, Army and, you know, uh, kind of go to war machine. And, you know, but they actually had a very robust a course uh, that was about six months long uh, to learn how to be an organizational effectiveness officer. And we learned, you know, how to do assessments, how to go into organizations, how to be a consultant. And then um, uh, after that course, I, I actually had tours on and off in my Army career in regards to internal consulting, uh, trying to figure out how to make things better in communities uh, as well as uh, uh, within uh, regular, uh, what do you call T O N E organizations, is that uh, basically, I, I did that uh, on and off in my career as well as I had other assignments. And I ended up, uh, before I graduated from the Army, uh, after a career in boots, uh, we kind of put together the Army uh, program for uh, Total Army Quality was the approach to that and kind of had oversight for that. And then after I got out of the, uh, 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 the Army, I uh, set up a small business, and I was a small business owner, and uh, didn't know anything about it. <laughs> like, you know, okay, the Army is kind of like, uh, you know, a big umbilical, umbilical cable, you know, they, they feed you, they move you, they tell you where your next assignment is and all that good stuff. And then, you know, I got out and I had set up a, a company and I knew nothing about, well, being business. Uh, but we took a lot of the same quality concepts that I'd learned and then we just kind of templated our uh, approach to set up a, a business uh, using that. And uh, it seemed to work. Uh, we grew really kind of fast, and uh, we expanded. And so I've been a small business owner and uh, did that for a number of years uh, and did a lot of different things, uh, from transformations, uh, from big and large, uh, from, you know, show, uh, shop level, you know, pointing in uh, where people are delivering things to, uh, uh, you know, to a customer to, well, major transformations. So we're talking about, you know, five-year plans for a large organizations and so kind of everything in between. And uh, along the, the way, uh, after uh, uh, small business ownership, I uh, went back to a large company. When I worked for uh, uh, Booz Allen, which is a Fortune 500 company, and did consulting there. And so that uh, approach is a lot different. You have a lot of different uh, project management type of approaches within that, but definitely uh, a lot of resources and a lot of things you can learn from. And uh, so that was very enriching. And so uh, that's kind of a little bit about myself. And, and I, the reason I say that, I think most of your faculty will have kind of a, you know, practical experience. That's that's why we teach is more so because uh, we've had the experiences of being in the trenches and seeing what works, and a lot of times it doesn't. Uh, see what Perhaps uh, we can share with you our own experiences uh, in uh, practical applications. And uh, I think that is probably one of the things that uh, I find within this particular course is very enriching is that uh, we have not only our, our own you know, fact that we bring into you, but really we view and, and see you as kind of co-teachers uh, as we go around and introduce yourself. I, I think listen to the experience and the different diversity we have. And uh, one of the things that really struck me when I was teaching for NGS, and one of the reasons I continue to teach for NGS, isn't because you know 
they'll tell the dean this, but it's not because of the big bucks they pay you, right? You know, if you're in education, you're making like really a lot of money, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, so, having said that, one of the reasons that keeps me going with this is that because I learn a lot from each course. From each cohort that we've ever had, each team, uh, there will be experiences and something new that I haven't learned before. So this is how I keep my, my saw sharp, is doing that. And then sharing these experiences with you is one of my objectives. But I want to firmly say that as you go through this, and I think this is one of the things a lot of students weren't expecting and when they signed up for this, is that they learned as much, perhaps, from the course materials and the approaches we have uh, as from their fellow students and, and what they brought to the table. You know, I, I came up through kind of the Army and the government and, you know, been in that sector, then I went into private industry and, and everything else. And then in this course, you'll find that there'll be people that are completely outside that industry. And you'll have a different thinking, different approaches about even your culture and what quality looks like and how they go about to do that. And that, I hopefully, will be one of the things I encourage you to share. And we'll talk about ways to do that. It'll be in our discussion questions. It'll be in our briefings. It will just, you know, we really do have this faculty student and student to student experience. And I think that's one of the things that most of the uh, students, when they, when they finally end up in graduating, uh, they reflect back and say, hey, you know, really thank each other for what we were able to share. So I ask you to, uh, uh, you know, bring what you have, and each one of you has a gift, each one of you has a set of experiences, each one of you has perspective uh, to share that with your fellow students. Uh, so uh, we'll cover my role as a lead faculty. Uh, I, I do have a little different set of role, uh, roles than perhaps the other faculty you have, uh, and one of them is to stay with you throughout the, the, uh, the entire uh, duration that you'll have this project. Uh, I'll be the one receiving your oral briefs, uh, your final briefs, and kind of making the recommendations back to the school if you meet the standards, and we'll talk about what success looks about uh, uh, shortly. So uh, that's a little bit about me, uh, and I'd be glad to share anything about my experiences. Uh, some of you, if you, uh, you know, either looking to go into large business or looking at going to be a consultant in a large firm or uh, where you at or are at, uh, if I can be a assistance in you know your personal uh, objectives and, and provide some type of uh, uh, insights from my own personal journey, I'd be glad to share that with you. And so uh, I've had students that I've taught you know a number of years ago uh, call me up for references, and we've done uh, some of them gone to apply for certifications like uh, project management and uh, used as a reference. So uh, I'll be the one that kind of has visibility of your entire experience with NGS uh, from now to the time of graduation. So and we'll cover that a little bit more. So that's a little bit about me. Uh, any other, uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know uh, about my experience or background. And uh, I'm going to ask then for you to uh, just kind of go through and provide a little bit, if you would, just one minute, if, uh, unmute yourself and say, uh, who you are, uh, where you're located, uh, a little bit about uh, professional experience, and if you have any particular expectations for the degree program, uh, just uh, succinctly say that. So, uh, Cameron, I've got you to the top of the list. Would you like to start with us? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> All right, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Cameron Helland. Um, I am out in Litchfield Park, Arizona. Um, I work uh, as a quality technician at uh, UTC, um, an aerospace company, um, dealing with uh, evacuation slides for um, multiple different aircrafts. Um, I actually just, um, back in January, graduated from the bachelor's program um, from NGS. <coughs> and um, I'm excited to join the, the master's program and, and try to get as much out of it as I, as I possibly can. Well, excellent. Thanks. And uh, uh, I will also try to point out some of the differences <laughs> between the, the baccalaureate and this one as we go through. So uh, there will be some. Uh, there will be a lot of things which will be very much aligned with what you had previously. Uh, but uh, this, this experience would be truly unique, I think. Thanks, Cameron. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Uh, is it Takalo? Moga? Moga? Uh, you're going to have to help me out.
Is it DiCarlo? Uh, it, oh, by the way, if you see your lips moving, it may be because your your phone's on the on still <laughs> still mute. So if you mute it, mute it and you're talking, which often happens in our environment here, uh, maybe do, double check your phone when you get ready to get started, just in case uh, you're not online. Okay. Let me come back to you. Uh, hey, Dave, is it Gorte? Yeah, Dave Garkey. Garkey. Okay. Okay, Dave. Yep. Let's go. So I'm, uh, I live in the uh, state of Rhode Island, and um, I currently work for Eaton Aerospace. Been there 10 years. I've worked uh, the whole 10 years. I've worked for them in quality, from inspection to supplier quality engineering, um, senior engineer, quality supervisor, and I'm currently a quality manager for a plant. Excellent. So, and then. Uh, to get out of the class, I mean, more knowledge in uh, quality systems and uh, different in, different outlooks from other in industries and businesses. Okay. Hey, well, thanks. And uh, like I said, we've got some folks who got some deep deep uh, experiences with uh, uh, with quality. Glad to have you in. Thanks. Okay. Edgar. Hi, my name is uh, Edgar Martinez from Phoenix, Arizona. I also work at uh, United Technologies along with Cameron as a quality tech too. I've worked there as a, as quality tech for just a little bit over five years now. Um, I actually got to train Cameron into our department. Uh, pretty much specialized in inspection, testing, and finalizing of evacuation systems like the slides that go on the airplanes. And my expectations are just to learn, to gain knowledge. Uh, I, I just like learning overall. And that's it. Lifelong. Excellent. Thanks. Ivana. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ivana. I know. I am from Texas, and I'm currently working for Agilent in the, I guess you could say, biohealth field of things, um, manufacturing oligonucleotides on a larger scale. Um, I'm hoping to learn even more about quality so that way I can move into more of a hospital setting working for a quality department. So, yeah. Uh, you said in a hospital setting? Yes. Oh, great. Yeah. We've had lots of folks who have gone through the healthcare. Uh, we've done emergency room operations and a lot of different ones. Oh, uh, let's see. Is it, uh, is it Yehi or uh, Jehi? <laughs> it's Jay. Okay, Jay. <laughs> right, my name, yeah, my name's Jaime O'Carter, but I go by Jay. Okay, Jay. All right. I just uh, currently got uh, transferred down. I'm in South Georgia, stationed at Moody Air Force Base. I just came from Japan, where I spent 14 years. I've been in the Air Force for 24 years. And uh, when we get up into the senior ranks, we start getting more into quality. And that's what I've been doing for a few years. Currently, I'm a production superintendent, and I also just finished up the bachelor's program with NGS, and expectations for this program just to get some more knowledge and skills to add to what I already have. Okay. Well, thanks, Jay. In fact, uh, this last cohort I taught, we had a black about out in Linden Hall, and uh, so great to have you in. Air Force is really kind of dedicated a lot to, to quality, and uh, appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yeah, tough tour of Japan, man. Oh. Uh, okay. I don't like South Georgia. <laughs> okay. I'm from Queens, New York, so it's a different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Judith, uh, how about yourself, please? Enter not. Judith, man. Yes, sir. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh huh. Yes. Um, so I'm. Um, Hello everyone, I'm Judith Antoine and I've been in 
a military service member for at least 19 years now. Currently stationed in Florida after four years of being stationed in Maryland. Um, pretty much I don't have any background in quality systems management, but I've uh, taken a leap of faith after um, seeing a presentation given by, um, by one of the staff members from NGS um, came to visit us and um, I decided to, why not, um, I'm here to learn and, um, and I've taken the leap. Okay, excellent. And uh, uh, where did you say you're in Florida? Say again? Uh, did you say you're uh, in Florida currently? Um, I am, yes, I'm sitting in Florida, Key West. Uh, Key West? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's tough too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> After Maryland, I'll take it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it beats some place like uh, you know Fort Polk, the armpit of the RA. Uh, so yes, that was my first duty station, sir, Fort Polk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, and uh, celebrate the sunset, then. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, let's see, um, uh, folks, if you will, uh, Matthew. Uh, Fontaine has provided a chat post. If you would uh, check that, uh, and the reason uh, Matthew is introducing himself that way, uh, you will be self-evident after you read his post, uh, but he has a, uh, a hearing uh, uh, disability, and uh, so he'll be communicating primarily, I think, uh, through writing, if that's correct. And so, uh, if you would, check a look at the chat uh, in the right hand, and uh, thank you, Matthew, for, for posting that. And I'm going to your QC manager and a uh, biochemist, as I recall, if I got that right. Okay, and uh, we're excited to have you here too. So thanks, Matthew. Ron, you're up next. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. Uh, hi. My name is Ron Pustos. I'm actually from uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, I've been uh, in various industries uh, throughout my career, everything from uh, uh, cosmetics to chocolate to chlorochemicals, and just uh, maybe this was past six, seven years in the biotech industry here in, uh, in uh, Boston, Cambridge area. And one of the things that they all have in common is kind of the uh, continuous improvement, uh, uh, process streamlining uh, kind of uh, genre. Uh, kind of the uh, the whole madness kind of started back in uh, uh, in my earlier uh, earlier career where I was trying to find a way in order to be heard. So I was always getting frustrated by knowing what the problems are, but how to communicate that out to management. So uh, I ended up uh, signing myself up for a Six Sigma black belt course, and I kind of leveraged the whole uh, Six Sigma process in order to get my presentation through, get my points through, and basically kind of show that the data and these things are what's causing your the process to, to not work as, as planned, and it's kind of, it kind of took away, you know, me being uh, the person or be, to take away the opinion and just kind of put it more into data set base. So out of that, uh, basically going to uh, continuous improvement management and stuff like that where we try to streamline processes and uh, try to make uh, all the employees successful. And uh, so what I want to leverage out of this program is I'm always probably going to be a student for the rest of my life and I want to continue that and uh, see where I can go from there. Okay, well, uh, uh, we're great to have you. No, it's great to have another black belt uh, in, in the program and uh, sharing your experiences with that. and. Uh, you know, clearly uh, managing by data is an important key aspect here. So, uh, it sounds like you've been also pretty diverse. So, thanks. Appreciate you having here. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, Sam? Sam Taylor? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Not clear. Great. Yeah, I'm uh, Sam Taylor. I currently live at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Uh, I'm in the military in the uh, intelligence field. 
I'm a voice intercept operator, or I, I recently was, I just switched jobs, but I'm a linguist by trade, an Arabic trained linguist. Um, I am currently the 18th Airborne Corps uh, Command Language Program Manager, and I also run the uh, 18th Airborne Corps Language Training Facility here at Fort Bragg. We service basically the entire eastern seaboard, um, joint service with Marines, Navy, Air Force, Army. Um, and uh, what I hope to get from this degree program is I really want to make this program better. I came into it. It was a mess, so hopefully I pick up some tools. <laughs> uh, uh, chaos manager, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, hey, well, uh, look forward to it. And uh, you'll be speaking another language. You'll be, uh, you know, be speaking this quality language here by the time you get to, get to graduate. So. Yeah. Okay. Glad to have you. Uh, hey, Larry. Uh, Larry uh, Spicer, please. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Larry Spicer, and I work for Aurora Healthcare in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I am a director of uh, training and quality assurance for loss prevention, and I look to get out of the class pretty much a culmination of what everyone has said on the phone. I would just add, just become a little bit more of a subject matter expert on change management. Thanks. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, and let's see. Who? Uh, let's go. Is it DeCalo? Are you back online? Uh, can we? Are you able to? Uh, She's in Africa, and it looks like we, we may have lost the, the voice connection here. Uh, let's see. Have I skipped over anybody uh, that uh, online that we haven't covered? Yes. I'm sorry? Uh, professor? I was yeah. looking. Uh, I think the Connor left a text. She put a text chat in there. Oh, okay. Uh, I I just sent her one. Let's see. Okay. And uh, audio is reconnecting. Okay, that sometimes happens. And uh, I know. Uh, you take a look and take a look at her text. Uh, you'll get a little bit of uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. ISO, great. Thank you for sharing that. So if you want to just check out, uh, she's there, and uh, wow, <laughs> don't we have some diversity in this course? Uh, and uh, Really, uh, I know we're going to learn a lot. Just know we're going to learn a lot. Thank you for your introductions, and I again encourage you to share a little bit with yourself and get used to the exchange uh, in the in the uh, by putting your your uh, uh, bios in the portal. And so let's go on. Let's uh, kind of continue on. Uh, was there anyone that we went through uh, as you started to look at your orientation had any difficulties, particular issues with using uh, the NGS portal? Uh, any questions concerning uh, the portal itself? And that's uh, one of our tools that we want you to get familiar with. I'm going to cover in a moment uh, basically uh, how we do some of the assignments and go forward in that, and you, the posting aspect sometimes is the biggest challenge for some new students. Uh, but basically, it's uh, a there's going to be an initial post that we'll put in there, and then you can add uh, uh, comments uh, in replies. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about the content of that. Uh, let's see if I've got any uh, chats uh, concerning. Uh, the uh, the portal. If uh, there's a lot of things in there, one is, a, is an overview. Just talks about the courses. Uh, we've actually this has just been kind of upgraded, so I'm kind of getting used to it as well. We just had some changes uh, technology 
so I'm kind of getting used to the new changes as well. But one of the things when you go into the portal, there will be news and, and announcements. Uh, for instance, uh, if you went in there, you, you would see uh, several announcements that I had made uh, concerning uh, the course itself, uh, the call-in, uh, you know, for instance, the, uh, uh, the number that we used to go to meeting and send out uh, an email, so you can put it in your Outlook for a lot of those who use that or Google. And then the portal should be also the place you always will have uh, the reference for the GoToMeeting login. There may be other announcements about uh, uh, assignments or perhaps uh, uh, scheduling of uh, mentoring sessions and those type of things. So that's a good place to check. You should check it uh, uh, you know, regularly. Uh, in there will always be the syllabus under course materials. There's a tab. You go in there, you, you click that on. And uh, there's a syllabus, and then the course materials in there will be the things that you will be assessing, uh, such as uh, the slides. There'll be there's a template in there for your papers. Uh, you'll have a paper upcoming. I'll talk about it, assignments uh, in the syllabus here in a moment. But basically, there is a template that you should use. It will follow uh, APA style. Uh, that is uh, very typical in academic environments, but. Whenever you write a paper, uh, there's a particular format for it, and I'll cover that a little bit more when we uh, we have that assignment coming up. Uh, in there also, there's a template for uh, PowerPoint presentations. Uh, so you know, if you, uh, if you got one at work or you got one that's got flowers and birds, you know, with uh, on the borders, eh, we're not going to use that. Uh, you got to use the templates uh, that we have because you're really working on an NGS project. And when you brief them back to you uh, later on to the champions and to the faculty, we'll have a standard approach. So in there will be uh, a PowerPoint template. There's a template for Word that's uh, for writing your papers. And I'll give you some tips. Uh, be sure that you always check with the faculty. For instance, some of them may or may not ask for like an abstract uh, in your papers. We don't have a lot of paper writing. Uh, most of the, the things you'll find will be team focused. We will, a lot of it will be in PowerPoint. And the reason for that is that uh, generally you know, you're working in teams and you're then also briefing teams, whether it's uh, uh, people within the organization. And so PowerPoint will be the, the primary uh, medium that we will use. And this will be actually uh, how you would develop your briefings. Uh, your final brief will be in PowerPoint. It's not a long thesis, but rather it's a, a PowerPoint briefing that you'll be putting together uh, that will tell the entire story of your projects and what you learned. So that's going to be very important. So uh, it, if your skills in using PowerPoint uh, is somewhat minimum, uh, you may want to uh, you know, take a look at that. Be sure you're comfortable with that. We'll be sure also that you can get to, to do <laughs> And you get the, the ability to get the latest software. I'll, I'll post some information about all the different discounts that may be available to you as a student. Uh, however, uh, we do have some papers uh, throughout the course, uh, heavy emphasis on team assignments and PowerPoint. Uh, the discussion forum is have individual work. Uh, this is where you will be, uh, a lot of your participation will be based on your re responding to questions that will be posted each week. There will be one or two questions each week uh, for you to respond to. Uh, and typically, uh, the first response will be on uh, Sunday. Uh, and then go read at least two other students' responses and provide them replies. Uh, provide uh, uh, information back to them uh, about their post. And so that will be the generally the approach that you will have uh, here on out. Now, some faculty, uh, you know, you may want to talk to them about, you know, uh, that the due dates, uh, whether it's Sunday and, and Wednesday. Usually, that works, I find, for most NGS students. But for those that, uh, uh, you know, I'll take a poll. Uh, we can change the date somewhat. But basically, uh, is that there's initial post uh, due, and then respond to two others uh, for each one of those. And then uh, we'll cover. Uh, the uh, uh, feedback procedures, uh, there is a, in the forum uh, in, or in the uh, portal, there's uh, feedback can be given to you different ways. One is uh, kind of a summary with the assignment along with the grade. Uh, I will also, a lot of times when you write papers, uh, the ones that have at least in my courses, I'll embed the comments uh, like in Excel and give you feedback right in the paper 
uh, in addition maybe to a summary. Uh, same thing even with uh, PowerPoint. So there may be feedback provided in, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, embedded as comments in those uh, uh, assignments. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more. Be sure you're comfortable with the different resources and such. Now, for some of you, if you go through and say, oh, my goodness, uh, my name isn't capitalized right, uh, there's a type of, you can go to the reset your settings in that. So uh, one of the things that uh, if we can't resolve it here uh, within our capabilities, uh, what I, if I can't help you, uh, Elaine Moore uh, has the capability as the RAI IT director with NGS to assist you in uh, if there's some other technical aspect uh, of using the portal that we need to rectify. Uh, is again, we have a, a new technology. Uh, I'm getting used to it as well. There may be uh, some things that I need to uh, ensure that uh, you're, you see on your side, because I have kind of a faculty uh, view as well. But uh, these are the things we have that we're going to go. And uh, uh, any questions? Uh, are set. Switch over to the syllabus real quick because I would like to review that to where we're going to head. And so this is uh, uh, we're going to be headed for this course. And uh, let me get uh, this up on the screen. Uh, and basically, uh, as I mentioned before, the purpose of the course 501. It's not a lot of heavy lifting, not a lot of heavy academic lifting, but basically we want to be sure that. Uh, you also understand the basic foundations of quality. We'll talk a little Hello. bit about. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Was there a question, or was that okay? If not, you may want to uh, put it. Um, uh, sorry, I was. I had mine unmuted. This is Megan, so I could do my introduction. Oh. Oh, Megan. Yeah, I missed you. Okay. <laughs> Hey, before we're going okay. on board, yeah, hey, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I'm joined by phone, so I guess that might be why. But um, my name is Megan Holmes. Um, I live in Springfield, Kentucky, and I work at Maker's Mark, which is located in the middle of Loretto, Kentucky. Um, I am a technical analyst there, and I've been there with the company for about four years. Um, I am certified in audit. Um, I do all of our GMPs at our company, our 5S audit, and my expectation for this class is to gain quality tools that I can use to be able to move up into a management position and to learn more about Six Sigma. Excellent, excellent. And uh, we probably need to make a field trip out to you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Come visit us anytime. Yeah, we had a. I think I gave you a post in the orientation that we had a student from Jack Daniels uh, as oh, well. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, yeah, That's we're awesome. Looking, yeah, so uh, hey, we're glad to have you in. Uh, sorry, we missed. O uh, jumped over you. And, That's uh, okay. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, the, the auditor aspect is uh, is one we certainly would like to uh, be able to include uh, into our discussion. We'll touch a little bit uh, on ISO and some of the other approaches, but. Uh, uh, glad to have you. At. Thanks. Hey, thanks for jumping in. By the way, uh, if I skip over, oh, you're here, welcome. It, yeah. And if uh, by the way, I need somebody whenever I start the course to be sure. Hey, professor, are you recording this thing? Uh, once in a while, we get you know started an engagement, and uh, I might forget to click. I have to manually click to start the recording. So if somebody would remind me, I would like to. Uh, uh, I would certainly be appreciative. Hey, uh, okay, let's, let's talk about where, where we're going. Uh, and uh, the objectives for this particular one, EDU 501, uh, in addition to as I said, getting you used to uh, this and, 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 and giving you some insight about where you're headed, is to also uh, ensure you kind of have a baseline of concepts. Uh, a lot of folks that join quality and particularly gone through that uh, may not know some of the very uh, seminal and, and, and important foundational aspects of it that will be the basis for everything we, we teach. And so we're going to cover those at a high level. Uh, we're going to ask you to start to uh, apply these concepts uh, in a case study format. Uh, we're not doing anything to an external project 
for applying anything in this course, but we will start to nominate those projects later. Uh, and we're going to do that so that we start to get used, you used to the team environment that we have and, uh, and the application to in a very practical way. Uh, so we're going to be uh, basically uh, uh, in, uh, give you exposure. Many of you are, are very familiar, perhaps, with the DMAIC model. For some of you that uh, uh, are not so, we're going to be uh, introducing that. And uh, the other key outcome of this is you get to know each other. And uh, later when we start to formulate teams, uh, so you can kind of determine uh, you know, both uh, what you start here tonight, what each one of you brings to the table is so different uh, and important that uh, that's the other outcome. And so uh, basically, uh, let's talk about uh, what you need to have to be successful. Uh, the uh, APA, the American uh, Psychological Association, is really the formatting uh, that we talk about uh, in regards to how papers will be done. Uh, there is a, a basic extract in the course materials. If you look at that and you look at the, uh, the uh, template, you'll probably figure out what you need to know. The important aspect is that you also need, whenever you do papers, for instance, or even do your post online, you should do a little research. You should include uh, not only the materials you have within the readings or within the courses, but uh, anything from external you may find on the internet or from professional uh, uh, research that you can include, and there's a way that they should be properly formatted. So take a look at those things if you have an array, what the template looks like, and some of the baseline information. We will use uh, the APA uh, association style. Do you need to buy the entire manual, which is rather thick? You know, it may be helpful, but it's not something I would say is necessary to be successful. If you follow the format, uh, I'll give you some feedback on those when the first paper to see if you're on track. Uh, and for those who've been through other courses, uh, you're probably very familiar with how to, how to do that well. Uh, we do have uh, the Baldrige criteria, which is one of my most favorite uh, tools to use. I'll be glad to we'll be uh, talking about that, incorporating that into our course materials for this. And if you notice, it says 2015-16. Well, if you follow that link, you click on that link that's in the syllabus, it will take you to the Baldrige website, and it's got 2017-18, uh, and they've increased the price of that from I think from 10 bucks. I think it's up to 12 bucks. Uh, but you would be very uh, successful if you go down uh, in that website and you'll be there's a 2015-16 I think it's version uh, for 10 dollars, and that's the one that this one is based on. It's the 2015-16, uh, which is the update this criteria. Uh, to the best business practices, uh, and so the continually renews itself. Uh, but the course and the questions were set up in 2015-16, and uh, they just published this uh, new criteria. And uh, if you would, you'll have to download it, and you get it from uh, ASQ, or you can get it from ASQ, uh, American Society for Quality. But uh, it's a little cheaper if you just follow that link and get it right there. Uh, we'll be using primarily the core values uh, in that. There will be a discussion around that as an assignment. As I mentioned, that's one of my most favorite tools I've used as a consultant. Uh, I've been on the National Board of Examiners for the Baldrige Show Award, and I just uh, treasure that experience immensely because I learned so much. And I really use and intertwine it into my consulting approach as a as a one of the probably most powerful models I think that uh, I've ever been, ever been exposed to. So we'll talk more about that in the upcoming course. Uh, so you need that. The learning uh, and uh, leading learning driving results uh, is actually an NGS, uh, and I'll show you in a moment here if I still get my website up uh, or the uh, portal and show you where these things are listed. And there's a primer. It's also in student resources. Uh, this is where uh, you can get these. There's no cost. They're NGS. Uh, these are the things are, uh, that uh, uh, will be consistent throughout the course. So you need to kind of review these things. You'll just get the NGS approaches down from that. Uh, the case study is in your course materials called the Neighborhood Pizza. And we'll have assignments on that uh, uh, is, uh, as a part of your team uh, presentation in this course. And the Nancy Tag book, which is uh, basically a, uh, has a composite uh, uh, of a lot of different quality tools that a lot of students find that's been beneficial to them even after they graduate through the course. Just a great, great good reference, but it also has 
uh, the case studies that we, that, like the St. Luke, that we'll be using. Uh, there's going to be an assignment. So you need to get that book. Uh, you can get a hard copy or you can download it from like Amazon on your Kindle. Uh, so there's almost everything you have in NGS, you'll have the capability of almost all of it online or get a hard copy if you want to uh, need one of those to, to go around with. And uh, so the Nancy Tag book is one that I would recommend that uh, you ensure that you have. Uh, take a look at it. You'll have reading assignments in there and a case study that will be coming from that book. And so uh, course slides, uh, there will be important instructional information as well as uh, additional assignment information in these. So be sure you review these as well. And uh, here's how our grading uh, will be looking. We will have participation. And participation by this primarily is in the discussion questions. Uh, this is the, the posting of uh, responses. Generally, you have two per week. Uh, we're just starting out with one. Uh, be sure that you're used to the, the assignment for the first week. So this is Wednesday. Uh, so by Sunday, you need to have a post in uh, uh, to answer the question, which is uh, around uh, your definitions of quality. Uh, and then I've expanded a little bit. I'd like to see some examples, if you would, how you might see your, how your definition of quality that you like applies in the workplace. And then when you reply to somebody else, this is important. Uh, when you reply to somebody else and you say, oh, OK, that's great. Oh, I like it. I agree with you. Uh, you're not going to get a lot of grading uh, uh, emphasis from uh, the faculty is that just don't do yes and no, I agree or disagree, but also add something to the discussion. Uh, this is our learning community. I, that's what I like to call the, the discussion area in the portal, is that this is for your exchange of ideas. And so if you read somebody else's post about quality and it kind of struck you about something maybe you haven't thought about, or maybe you have another example from your life experience you could add in that might be applicable to that. Or perhaps you didn't really fully understand with another student that posted and you ask a probing question. Uh, that would be all very appropriate. Or if you've got a reference that you might find that you would like to share with uh, your fellow students, that would be also very appropriate. So in the discussion questions and the things that you look at, uh, that is what we are looking for for quality of content. Uh, is to provide your initial post. Uh, if you can, try to include examples into that, references. And be sure to try to include course materials and reading. Just don't shoot you know, from the hip, but you kind of ensure these things are well referenced. And then uh, when you respond to another student, add to the conversation. And sometimes uh, we're really looking forward to the back and forth. You know, sometimes it, it, it's a dialogue that you have with each other. Uh, you know, here, here's a problem that we got at work. Here's what my approach is, and other students say, "Well, hey, here's an approach I've used before that you know may be helpful for you." And that's where this exchange occurs. Uh, so, 30% of your grade uh, is that. There may be some variation again on the timing on this, but basically, uh, it's about noon on Sunday is probably a good time for you to have things in, so that people. Or, or early uh, Sunday afternoon, so you can look at it and then respond to two others by Wednesday at 6 p.m., uh, again, Eastern time. So if you uh, respond within that time, time frame, uh, then we're, uh, you'll be good to go. Uh, there will be an individual assignment. Uh, these, this will be a paper on core quality principles, and that's worth 20%. There will be your first uh, team assignment. We'll put you into a tentative team uh, that I'll uh, uh, usually will assign you into uh, for your uh, St. Luke case study. Uh, that will be uh, one that will ask you to form into a team, to put some team uh, uh, ground rules together and work on a case study so you kind of get used to you know, working through that mechanism of uh, working with your fellow students uh, online. Uh, the final presentation, which is also a team product, uh, will be on the uh, neighborhood uh, uh, pizza uh, case study. And I'll give you more details on how that will unfold as we go forward. There's a template in the, in the, in the course materials that you'll be using for these. Uh, so, and then we have assignments in the first, uh, as we mentioned here. Now, sometimes the, the syllabus may have kind of a broad uh, thing. We may give you additional uh, instructional information in the portal uh, on that. And uh, uh, you need to start reading the quality toolbox, uh, the, the assignment, and then you can kind of go through this. Uh, it provides you know, five weeks. Now, what occurs typically in NGS is that there will be four weeks of webinar instruction where it's kind of a feed for it, what I'm doing tonight, you know, 
uh, it's me mainly providing, uh, or your faculty get, providing you instruction. There'll be some dialogue going back and forth. You know, questions. Really encourage that is to to the extent possible. Uh, but we've got a lot of folks uh, within the cohort, so a lot of times there's not a lot of ability to have a real dialogue. But one of the things that we do encourage uh, then is uh, a participation through you know uh, your comments in the chat uh, as well as asking questions. Uh, and then on the last week, typically in the last week is a team briefing, uh, and it is a summary typically of an assignment that is typical of what you've learned in the entire course. And those are often what we call mentoring sessions uh, to a degree. Uh, and that is that uh, you have a, a team briefing, and maybe within the same time slot that we have on Wednesday, 8 to 10. Uh, or uh, at times, we've uh, you know, scheduled those sessions that uh, work better for the team and for the faculty. You know, if you're uh, out of country, I've uh, done, uh, we had people, uh, you know, as I mentioned, the different uh, time zones. Uh, uh, we scheduled it uh, in the evening, earlier in the evening, 5 p.m. So there'll be some flexibility. I'll, what I'll do, at least for those sessions, is that uh, if the team uh, briefings that we'll have uh, need to be done outside the time of, of uh, our normal, or could be, I'll give you my schedule, and then we can pick a time uh, that we can have that briefing that will be convenient to all the members of the team as well as that. But typically, uh, the last assignment is you guys briefing. Uh, back what you learned uh, in, in demonstrating that, and uh, we'll talk more about that. But the fifth week is typically kind of that approach. So uh, that is uh, the syllabus here, and uh, uh, we're looking for quality of input. We're looking for, as you go through this, uh, is that you're including the course materials, the readings, and such. So any questions that you have maybe on the syllabus where we're going for our particular uh, course this time? The column put at the bottom, are the weekly assignments due to Sunday before the new week or by Tuesday before the next webinar? Yeah. Uh, the way I normally do is that for the written assignments, which are both the team and uh, the written papers, that they need to be done by like 6 p.m. or noon. Uh, it depends on uh, if, if there's an assignment that I want to summarize and include in the in the uh, discussion for that webinar, I might ask you to have it in by noon. But typically, the written assignments are due on Wednesday. And uh, so the, the papers and anywhere where it says, like the Luke case study or your final briefing, normally there will be a date that, that is due. And it's usually, for my classes, uh, will be on Wednesday uh, of, uh, of the course. Uh, there may be some, you know, you check with your prof if the dates are different. Cause they, they, but basically, uh, written assignments uh, will be due on Wednesdays, uh, and uh, the the postings, the individual ones where we talk about the DQs, the initial post by you uh, is on Sunday, and then responding to two other students by Wednesday uh, as well. So that that that's the the rhythm. So okay. great question. That that answer or the, or is there? Any other questions uh, about that? OK, if not, um, let me see if I can quickly it's still up. Uh, no, I won't be able to. Uh, OK. Um, are you seeing the, uh, the portal on your screen right now? Okay. All right. My view is going to be a little different from yours, but uh, let me just briefly kind of reiterate uh, what we talked about here. Uh, the announcements up here uh, typically uh, is that um, uh, as you go in, the news and the, and the announcements, you click on that. That's uh, like what I was talking about. Uh, provided a welcome here. These are things that you would see that, uh, for the entire cohort. Um, the syllabus is here. The course materials uh, that I just talked about, the slides that you have, and the templates that you need, and some further instructions will be listed here in your course materials. Uh, what will occur additionally is that typically this is also after the uh, webinar is recorded and provided to NGS. They'll so upload it and put a link to it. 
it's a large file. It can't. It, normally, it's not easy to download because it's just too huge. Uh, and so, uh, there'll be a link where you can review it here in, in the course material. In addition to that, uh, is the end of course. Uh, so after each course, we encourage you to provide e uh, evaluation about what you thought went well, what you liked, uh, feedback on the professor, and we really look at that. The NGS is very serious. Uh, they take student feedback. Uh, the dean reviews these. So uh, very important. The, the templates are down at the bottom here. You can see the PowerPoint and the APA at the bottom of that. And underneath that is the uh, uh, APA uh, basics. Uh, later on, I'll talk about the tracker. Uh, don't worry about that right now. Uh, it'll come later. And uh, so the discussion qu uh, forum is what I talked about here. And uh, uh, this is the uh, generally the learning materials where we have. And you can see how it's broken down by week, the assignments. And in here, uh, like the discussion questions. And in here, if you see, I've actually, it's a little bit uh, uh, research uh, definitions. Uh, the post about your definition of quality to the portal, okay? Uh, add to mix uh, uh, examples, if you can, about your definition. And then uh, uh, noon Sunday, provide your initial post. And then uh, noon Wednesday, I've got in here, uh, for our case here, for getting your post in. Uh, if you get in by 6 o'clock, I'd be fine. But what I'm thinking is that, and what a lot of students find is that uh, if you get in a little earlier in the day, uh, it allows your student, you know, sometimes people like to work on Sunday, you know, afternoon on on uh, doing this. And if you get your initial post in, they can post the the, uh, uh, the second part of that. So if you get it in by Sunday, uh, be fine. I heard the guideline of noon. And then uh, as you go in here, uh, as Ivana has already done, provide a response, okay? And then you add a reply, which means that if I click that on, that be the response to her. So you would give her feedback uh, on this by giving a reply and posting that. Okay. Um, let me go one other place, and that is uh, student resources. If you go up to there, and then you go over to where it says masters. All right. The primer that I talked about in the syllabus is located here. So if you go to student resources, click that on, go to masters, and you'll see the project pri uh, pri uh, primer and the champion's guide. So those are the things we, you'll need to review uh, and that's what we referenced in that. In that. Okay. Any questions uh, about the portal or what I've just covered? All right. Let me get you back to uh, the rest of the uh, presentation tonight. So, um, and uh, I'm going to. Now, kind of transition to talk a little bit about uh, uh, school and, and uh, talk about the course in the way ahead. What are the teams that, uh, yeah, well, uh, one of the cohorts I meant to say that I taught, uh, always do a, an after action kind of review uh, at the end, uh, you know, what was your experience with NGS? And I thought that was a great analogy by one of the students. He said, <clears throat> uh, going through the course was kind of like, going on a roller coaster. And uh, there are ups and downs, uh, but it also goes very fast, right? But he was surprised at the end how exhilarating it was <laughs> and uh, how much it was kind of fun for him. Uh, so I always kind of thought that was a great analogy because it is very fast. you got a master's in a year. Uh, there's going to be challenges, uh, which we expect to occur. Uh, you know, getting data, working on projects, balancing your life, all that will be part of the learning experience. Uh, but in the end, uh, we really hope that you find that this is something you can take to the bank. That, as you mentioned, many of you said, this is a learning experience, and we're really going to focus on, on that. And a lot of that will be, uh, we'll talk about success factors here. Uh, is that you're going to be successful in your projects, you're going to be successful as individuals in getting your knowledge, skills, and abilities uh, basically as a change agent. And the sharing that you have in the team, uh, I've had some teams that go through this course and they've actually went on to, you know, <laughs> make a dollar at it. They quit their daytime jobs and they uh, went with their colleagues that uh, they went through the course and went in for business for themselves because they were just like working with each other. So I, I hope that's part of your experience. And um, so if you're ready, uh, let's, uh, you know, reach over, buckle up, raise your hands in the air, and let's get it going on this ride. So let's talk about the, uh, uh, 
what we have. Uh, NGS, uh, here's the school's mission. It really was born uh, the, after the quality, uh, were really the, when there was a huge uh, wave of quality in the United States uh, and really took hold. Uh, you know, this is kind of where NGS emerged, was to not only uh, satisfy the needs of, of developing quality professionals with a broad background, but contributing to the, the, uh, to the body of knowledge. And so we include a lot of different things. Uh, in that. Uh, we're going to be looking at you have as competencies within what we think is quality systems management and it covers many of them and if you've gone through a black belt, many of you do have had that or you've been through an ISO auditor, one of the things that I think is unique about this course is that you'll have some things that are not typically found in those uh, other black belt programs. Uh, one of them is like we teach strategic planning. There will be a, an emphasis on uh, supplier management. Uh, Sometimes you don't see those in black belt certifications. So you, you, there will be an aspect about we go a little bit deeper around financial. There's a whole course on that. We have uh, project management. Uh, we have a course that's very much aligned with the uh, uh, Project Management Institute. And so uh, there will be a lot of uh, different uh, uh, approaches, but our common theme is that everything you'll be taught uh, will be practical application. So we have some folks that really understand the theory, right? They understand, you know, can cite, plan, do, check, act, and, and tell you what the school definition is. But if you can't apply it uh, in a way that is both meaningful and produces results, uh, that's our aim. And, and that's one of the things we will uh, reinforce in all the readings and all everything else is that your project, the practical application aspect of this, and this is where I think also uh, a lot of the confidence will come uh, in our students is that once you apply it in a very practical way, you get confidence that you can apply it to other places. And the fact that you may be working outside of an industry that you're comfortable in uh, further you know, enhances that learning experience. So uh, theory and the knowledge uh, and the success we, you know, whatever. But let me tell you what I personally, what I believe is my own particular success goals. Uh, it is your kind of mentor. Uh, I, that's kind of what I view myself in. Uh, is that uh, you're going to have successful projects. Uh, of the 200, uh, however many I've had, I've never had a team, an NGS team, that failed to produce the results, that didn't achieve the objectives of what the champion wanted, uh, the organization we were doing this practical men, or that achieved the goals of the school. All right. So one of my objectives is make you successful and to ensure that you can apply this in a way that's both meaningful and, uh, and, and uh, appropriate. Uh, and in doing that, uh, in making sure that you are helped, given success, is that we're going to look at you through a couple of different lenses. There's uh, the academic approach, you know, what are the things you can you explain the tools, can you use them in a way that is uh, both uh, appropriate and integrated and then uh, apply it to the project that we've, we've talked about before. Uh, and also that you're getting along and you're working in a team, which is a, we'll talk about tonight. So uh, my success is that you're going to be successful. And uh, uh, we will give you feedback along the way uh, that uh, uh, you hopefully will uh, be able to uh, know exactly where you stand. And uh, uh, we'll be measuring this against uh, Oh, a lot of different ways, but basically we're also going to ask you to do self-assessments. Uh, there is uh, a couple of uh, toll gates where we have you as a team say, okay, where do you think you are? Where do you think you are with the team? Uh, where do you think we are progress within the, uh, the your, your particular uh, project? And we also check with the champion. Uh, one of the things you have as part of our projects is that we ask for the champion to give feedback, to, to accept the recommendations uh, of the team. And that is part of the success factor that you have demonstrated not only you can do this academically, but you also met the particular goals of the champion. And again, I have never had a champion uh, deny any of our teams uh, that they didn't accept their, there may be some provisions in there, oh, well, I need to consider some of these, need further staff study, but you know, uh, typically uh, the champions uh, accept our this. And what is a champion all that? I'll cover that with you shortly. Uh, so we talked about that. Uh, and those are some of the things we're looking for. Results. Uh, typically, there's a, an ROI, a return on investment that you will have associated with your projects. Uh, and uh, we will be including in your uh, course uh, 
draw from a lot of different bodies of knowledge. Uh, we just, as I mentioned, don't pull from uh, Lean Six Sigma, even though that's a huge component of what we have, is that we also ensure that the uh, other concepts that we'll uh, talk about largely in this thing, like how to use maybe the Baldrige card criteria, how do you look at an organization through the lenses of values, uh, how do you look at an organization uh, and take it uh, through enterprise change, which is strategic planning. You know, how do you make a significant change to an organization that way? How would you maybe set up a performance metrics uh, system for an organization? Uh, so we will include uh, those type of things that uh, uh, include the, the body of knowledge from project management, uh, how to manage your projects. We'll give you, a, there's a whole course actually on that that uh, will help you uh, you know, manage the project that you have, because this is what it is. It's uh, a short duration, uh, and we'll give you some of those skills to be sure that you know how to apply it, not only Lean Six Sigma, but the body of knowledge that comes largely from uh, Project Management Institute, which is a very standard uh, set of criteria and body of knowledge that uh, uh, for project management. And uh, Benchmarking uh, is another course that we have that may be kind of unique. A lot of Lean Six Sigma type of approaches and certifications don't include that, but I will say that many of our NGS teams get great gains out of looking externally, and there's action and approach. There's a discipline to this. So we'll talk about primary and secondary benchmarking and how do you go out to another organization, how do you do online research, and incorporate those you know, great new ideas other people have struggled with and put it back into your project. So we'll have benchmarking, uh, we'll have then uh, basically an in integration of all of these uh, bodies of knowledge in your experience uh, that uh, again uh, hopefully will make you, and I think largely if I would say what, you know, one of the things that NGS graduates is change agents. Uh, I don't know if you ever thought about yourself that way, but I see, at least in the students that go through the course, uh, that they're able to not only be better problem solvers, and, you know, help you make you a better leader, because if you know how to apply the mag, if you know how to apply this to these tools, I think you make better decisions, because you know how to use data, you know how to frame up the problem, you know how to apply a root cause analysis, it, it, it makes you a better problem solver. It also makes you a better leader, because uh, you'll have the part of the team dynamic uh, that you need to motivate, and how do you you know, ensure teams are successful. And then you have a lot of different tools uh, that you can apply to any situation. And each one of these, uh, whether it's project management or Lean Six Sigma or Benchmark, each of them has value in themselves. And so as we talked about the each is, is understanding how to tailor and use them in your particular circumstance as one of our desired outcomes. Any questions uh, as we go? And tonight I'm going to kind of give you a stream of consciousness, you know, <laughs> going through and, and uh, we'll have a chance then after we finish up, I'll hang out for any particular questions. But uh, uh, the MVP, uh, that's what uh, you'll hear over and over again. It's an acronym that we normally use a lot. Uh, it's the Masters of Business Project. Uh, and uh, uh, you guys that are in the uh, baccalaureate, you have BBP. Uh, and we will... Uh, uh, you can see some of the differences, by the way. You know, I don't think you have project management uh, uh, in your previous course. Uh, we'll be going into uh, some of the other aspects that uh, built on what you had in, in your baccalaureate course, but uh, there are aspects that the, in this one, particularly like supplier management, I don't think you guys had uh, in your under, undergrad. Uh, and so, basically, there's, uh, uh, the projects are nominated, they come not from the school, but from your workplace. Uh, the students will go through, uh, you will go through, uh, basically a nomination process. And, and we part of this is that everyone will nominate a potential area to improve. Now, whether we actually select it or not uh, is not necessarily the most important aspect, but you understand how to select an improvement project. And that you nominate that project and we'll consider it, and we'll be some evaluation in there. Like, yeah, I've got a project, but I really don't think the champions are going to support that. It's not something I'm, I'm particularly interested in. Or it may be the opposite. So, yeah, I'm really excited about this. This is something that I can get, you know, <laughs> get some bandwidth on, some traction in at work, and I really would like to have other students join me in and help me solve these issues that may be in my workplace. 
And uh, so we'll talk about that. But they come from you, these projects. And then we formulate teams after we nominate the projects around uh, these by your preferences. And then there will be some things from my view about how to balance your team. Uh, and so that will be part of our journey in this course. And uh, every course you have from here on out, there will be some that have this a little bit less, like the supplier management, uh, isn't as focused on the project. But almost every other course you have is that you learn stuff in the classroom, and then you go out and try to apply it to this project. And that is the foundational piece. This is the practical application part. And uh, uh, here's the different things. What's the different nature of the project? It's been huge. Uh, I had a cohort with a master black belt in it, uh, and we were addressing configuration management issues with the nuclear plants. Uh, he worked for Florida Power and Light, and we were working uh, um, areas that would involve nuclear <laughs> you know, uh, issues. Uh, and we've had there's a project that had actually out of Texas in Houston uh, about icing slipping off of cakes. Icing slipping off of cakes. Think about that. Well, you say, well, how, how can that be like uh, a project for a master's program? Well, if you've got a bakery that's uh, a regional and it's making you know hundreds and thousands of baked goods and uh, they find that after they ship them, the icing falls off the cake, you know, it's about maybe a hundred thousand dollars in losses or if the labels uh, come off and uh, they get lawsuits because it didn't warn somebody that uh, they had nuts in the uh, ingredients and a lot of liabilities in it so we had a team working on keeping icing on top of cakes and being sure labels were sticking and we saved them a huge amount of money uh, we also had um, a project uh, that had to deal with uh, you know, aircraft readiness uh, we had Healthcare, emergency rooms, I mentioned before. Uh, we did things to improve how billing was done through insurance organizations, uh, how to get the throughput in the emergency room uh, done faster. Uh, we had uh, projects that, uh, well, just about every different scope. The one in Kenya was actually with uh, one of the airlines there and how to improve maintenance on aircraft. We had UTC projects that had to deal with uh, uh, first-time pass-through, manufacturing-related. So just about anything and everything, uh, it, it shows the universality of this quality. It applies to almost a huge scope of anything uh, you can improve. And so we have all these different types of things. And we'll give you some criteria about what is a good project. So uh, this is just a list. Uh, and I want you to start thinking about it. I want you to start thinking about what might be a project in your own workplace. And we'll uh, give you some more criteria about that. But start that to the process right now. Here's a schematic, basic a visual, that shows uh, the relationship of what we think that we do. So in the lower left here, the faculty will teach you a course. You're going to have different courses uh, as you go through. Then you come into a Teams, right? And then you apply that to an external organization. The champion will give you some feedback as well. So you're managing uh, a champion. Uh, somebody that's in the organization that uh, will be the sponsor of your project. And uh, you'll be interfacing with that uh, uh, champion and uh, that organization uh, and getting their needs and what the requirements are. And uh, so they're the third party, really. It's uh, you as students, the faculty, and the other third party that we include in our learning uh, approach is the champion, the, the organization. And their support is very, very valuable. So the reason uh, a lot of champions support that and why we're doing this and basically is what? They're getting consulting for a year. Now, uh, anybody know what a rate with a good consultant might make, uh, like an hourly rate, uh, if you were to hire, let's say, a black belt in to, to work on a project? Anybody got an idea what the, the daily cost of a black belt might be? Uh, you think 50 bucks? <laughs> Anyone want to take a venture? How much uh, uh, the day rate of a black belt might be uh, working on a project? 200, 300. A day? 
Yeah, maybe more. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Let me uh, let me share you my experience. Is that the black belt we have on our team? Uh, they're getting like three hundred bucks an hour, not a day. Uh, and uh, if, if you're working on projects that uh, where you're saving a lot of money, uh, but uh, yeah, you know the black belts, and if you got some experience in behind it, and you, uh, by the way, this is something, and when you go through this course, you can say, hey, not only did I uh, learn stuff, uh, but I also have the proof that I did it well. I have basic things I can put in your resume, uh, a project that you can have an ROI, and uh, so. Uh, a black belt. This is not, at least in my experience, that uh, uh, is very expensive. And you guys are basically are going to provide a champion for the price of admission, you know, for their support, uh, for their uh, support of your project, and giving you the resources and helping you out. You provide them basically a year of consulting. Uh, so if you think about the value of that, uh, it's huge. In fact, I've had some teams uh, from NGS uh, work on a kind of parallel project where the champion had another uh, black belt project uh, where they brought contractors in and got a better result from the NGS team than they did from the other one. And so uh, there's value for the champion to use you uh, because we're going to provide uh, back to them recommendations that, in my experience, have been significant. Uh, that would uh, provide the champion not only a, a set of recommendations that they take to the bank, uh, but ones then uh, he's got or she got uh, basically for just allowing you to uh, get your degrees. And uh, if you're in the organization, you benefit because you're you know, getting your degree and learning, and then they benefit through this free consulting. And so uh, that is the, the approach that we use. Uh, we'll talk more about how we interface, uh, and there will be – uh, charters that we'll talk about as well, because uh, we basically, you know, once we get this about right, we will uh, scope the projects, and then we'll uh, do a written agreement, which is basically a charter that uh, we sign, uh, where I sign, uh, you guys as a student sign, and the champion sign. And so we uh, will continually to evaluate and get feedback from you as we go. Uh, the methodology we use is baseline is the uh, uh, DMAIC model. There's a lot of other problem-solving approaches that you can use in quality, as you may know. Uh, you can use different approaches, uh, Kaizen, you can use just lean, but we use a lean six segment approach, and we use the methodology of DMAIC to define, measure, analyze, uh, improve, and control. And we kind of, the courses kind of follow that. So at the very beginning, uh, like this course, the next course, and uh, maybe one after that, you're still in the define phase. You're going to go through, and let's scope it out. Let's be sure we have clarity about what the project uh, is about. Uh, is this the, the right champion, or is it too big or too small in scope for what we need to do? And we'll have that discussion. We'll do a define. And after we define it, then you go out and collect some data. And you bring that in, and we'll continue with that. So we follow that, and your course is kind of, you'll be going through these different aspects. And for some of you, you already know what DMAIC is. And for some of you, wow, uh, this is something new. So each one of them has a different outcome. And uh, uh, we'll uh, uh, continue to build on it. Here's another kind of a approach. You can see the define. Uh, here's typically the type of things that we do within that is that basically we get a, a project. Uh, we uh, uh, get our arms around what are, what are the issues, what the customer's requirements are, what the champion's requirements are. Uh, what's the left and right uh, limits of that, and then we go out and collect the information around the current state, uh, take that data, and then uh, do some analysis of it about what we can do to improve uh, the root causes and the reasons why it's not hitting the mark, uh, and then provide those recommendations. We may even do a pilot of those to figure out, you know, try them out on a smaller scale to see if uh, they work. And then at the end, uh, basically, we recommend uh, you know, here's what you need to do to sustain the gains, and uh, well, here's the things you need to do to monitor this to ensure it hits the target. So basically, at the very beginning, we start with the define phase, and then at the end, which is the control, is about what you will do in Master Business Process 3, which will be the end of the course. So that's the duration of this. And uh, uh, we also, as I mentioned, in addition to Lean Six Sigma, we kind of follow the project management. Don't 
worry about memorizing these or you'll get a whole class on it later, but just let you know that we also incorporate and integrate the project management approaches of initiating a project and you do the planning on that, execution, monitoring, control. And uh, here's the schematic that kind of says, here's what we do that kind of aligns it up. So your courses match kind of these two late major methodologies. It's a uh, DMAIC, which comes from Lean Six Sigma world, and then the project management world of uh, here's the five phases that are commonly accepted with uh, project management. And so we'll kind of have walk you through those phases, and you'll be seeing uh, activities that we pull in from both the project management and Lean Six Sigma. So we're integrating things as we go on. And uh, so those are the important things. Uh, we'll cover these a little bit more in detail as we go on. Now the teams themselves, uh, very rare. Uh, occasionally we may have an individual working uh, on a singular project. We've had one or two of those, for instance, if there's something that's proprietary or very sensitive uh, in that, or you know, we start out a project, uh, but very, uh, and, and a team member drops out or something like that, but it's rare. Uh, because the team experience is so vital to understanding uh, the MGS approach. And also it allows you to balance your, your uh, work. Uh, we, when we do teams, uh, we look at two to four typically. Uh, four is the upper limit, uh, two is the minimum. Uh, with this size class, we'll probably you know, have somewhere between uh, uh, four to five teams would be my guess at this point. And, uh, uh, we'll have in our first course, this is where we try things out. We'll tentatively put you into a team for some of the assignments. This may or may not be the team that you stay in. Uh, uh, so we're gonna kinda do that and sometimes uh, uh, initial teams are the ones that click and we'll stay with that throughout the entire duration or we're gonna make some changes and you'll have the ability to say, hey, I'd really like to maybe jump on another project or a different team and there shouldn't be any hard feelings about that when we put things together because uh, that's just part of the learning experience. And then we have a variety of factors that we use to uh, try to put you in, uh, set you up for success. Uh, your interest, which team, you know, some of you are like, hey, I want to work in healthcare or I want to work on uh, a project that I have in biochemistry, whatever that might be. Uh, and somebody says, yeah, I want to join in on you. Or you're working on a project uh, that you want to work in uh, together uh, with somebody else that may be in your organization. Uh, but we look at these different things, the team dynamics, and one of the things that's important to know, when we do uh, the team assignments, is that generally you share uh, the same grade. So it's uh, the team gets a singular, typically, grade uh, when you do a team assignment. And so there's kind of, you know, you're evaluated as a team. There are uh, exceptions to that. Uh, for instance, if uh, the team isn't balanced. In other words, uh, as you go through this, there's one individual who knows everything and the other two, for instance, are not participating at all, uh, then there may be a change uh, in regards to whether everybody in the team receives that. But generally for team projects, uh, you share a grade. And uh, uh, later on, as I mentioned at the very bottom here, uh, we actually formalize this uh, team. We put it into writing. Uh, we'll develop, give you the skills to do a charter. A lot of times uh, charters are done at the very beginning of a, a defined phase, but we want to be sure after you've gone through a couple of courses here uh, that we've got the right project selected for our unique requirements here. Uh, and then we do a charter signing after we're really sure that you've got a good project and you've got a good team and uh, a good champion. So, um, Any questions on teams? Okay. Hang in there. Uh, I know it's late, and uh, let me cover a couple of other things that may be helpful for you. Uh, is that you will be going through the team process of forming, storming, norming, and etc. Uh, so, by living this experience of coming together, and by the way, you will go through all these phases, no matter uh, whether you're working on this team or you've got one at work, or you know, uh, it's normal that teams go through these phases. And so we will ensure that you also aren't stuck in forming or that you're storming. In other words, you're not working well. Uh, we'll uh, evaluate to ensure that you as a team are moving forward to high performance. And uh, there's a lot of different techniques uh, in that. But uh, part of this is because, well, uh, quality is a team sport uh, for most part. 
Uh, it is uh, about getting other people to work together or to buy into your recommendations. Uh, it is often things that you facilitate, and I think uh, one of the aspects that uh, I think this is probably most insightful is figuring out how to work with uh, your colleagues, and this is going to be over, you know, uh, not sitting down face to face unless some of your end up in teams with people who are, you know, in the same location. But most part, uh, this will be done through, you know, phone calls and webinars with your fellow team members and exchanges of information that you have uh, through emails. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll talk about the other things that are available to you. But basically, is that. Uh, in addition to uh, reviewing, reading the assignments, there will be team meetings that you will need to uh, establish. Uh, that will be a convenient time for you all. So the logistical aspect about that and time zones and how we manage that uh, will be part of our factor. And uh, you will we'll be going through those uh, various phases. And uh, so the first thing, we are already in the forming phase. Uh, once you get acquainted with each other, get to understand uh, the norms we have, our expectations, what we're talking about tonight. And uh, then as we go through, when we put you into a team a little bit later on in this course, uh, is that uh, you will have you generate some ground rules about uh, how you're going to work together. And that will help you move through the storming phase and uh, move into uh, the ability to uh, achieve your assignments uh, on time and on target to a high standard. That's uh, one of our objectives, that you as a team are able to do that, as well as your individual work. So. We'll talk more uh, about your progression, but we evaluate that too, that your uh, team uh, is continuing to progress as well as you as individuals. And here's kind of a, a schematic that uh, shows the interrelationships of all the things we talk about. Uh, the project phases, the initiate and plan at the top of the project management things. It relates to where you will be in your forming storming air and the define phase. So there's relationships, the interconnectivity of this is that you'll grow basically. And as you go through these uh, phases uh, in these courses, uh, that we hope that you're changing as a team as well as you're learning different aspects about the planning phase and the, the fine phase and bringing them together. Uh, and the courses that we have then to help you do that are kind of uh, listed here then on this, uh, this chart. So we kind of uh, identify the courses that fit these. They don't 100% fit. Uh, clearly and cleanly into each one of these, but typically the courses are aligned to ensure that you're successful in each one of these phases uh, as you move through the course. So we start here uh, on the left-hand side, and then when you graduate in Master Business Process 3, uh, that is when you have that. So uh, there is uh, MVP 1, 2, and 3 are courses that we have that uh, basically they'll be with me. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, we have this set you up, and then we'll get together. And these are like kind of toll gates to so kind of say, okay, here's where we are in the projects. They're mainly focused on the projects. You'll have some time uh, to be working on your project, to, to do, uh, get the data from them and to apply. And for the most part, they're not, when we have these classes, it's more of a mentoring session. We sat down with you in your team and say, okay, what are your specific uh, issues? How do you apply that? And so we give you some tailored uh, feedback about where you are in each team. And so uh, typically in those courses, you have like maybe the first week you may have instruction. And then the other uh, weeks of the course, instead of uh, you going out and listening to webinars, you're actually applying it. And then we have uh, a mentoring session where you talk with me or one of your faculty members. And then you're going in and say, OK, here's what we found. Here's a unique to our project. And, and you're uh, applying it, and uh, so we, we, we change it from a large webinar to a team webinar. Uh, typically, is what we do uh, for these courses in MP1, 2, and 3. And we're evaluating your progress to ensure you're, you need to be about where you need to be for academically, as well as the project progression, so that we don't let you slip behind, because uh, we have some ways to ensure that you're on track. And so that's the, the big picture there. And here's the plan, do, check, act. Uh, we'll talk about uh, that. And then the basically is that you'll, you know, we'll be following this. It's an important aspect. As I mentioned, uh, part of my role as a lead faculty is that uh, uh, I'll have build up a knowledge of your project and also the team. And so as you go through the individual courses, right, is that you kind of go deep into the subject matter. And then when we get back together, 
uh, I'll have probably the most knowledge about your team and where your project is, and so that we can then, you know, uh, pick up where we have before, so you don't have to, you know, re-educate the faculty uh, on uh, on your project. But you know, I'll have a kind of a sense about what is each team has a personality. Your projects will have a different personality. They'll have different circumstances. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, we actually had the ice. <laughs> Icing slipping off the cake, uh, one team, and the other one was the nuclear one. It was in the same cohort. And so the application of the quality of those were a little bit different to each one of those circumstances. Uh, so in that, uh, we have the ability then to kind of give you tailored mentoring, if you will. Uh, I'm the one that kind of represents the school for the charter. So when we sign that on behalf of the school, I sign off. This is, OK, this is going to be a good uh, uh, project for behalf of the academic requirements. And uh, uh, point of contact, uh, if there's any questions from the champion who is sponsoring that, I'll be the one that basically uh, can address uh, school requirements with the champions and those type of things. And uh, uh, it is more of a mentoring role. Uh, if you have any issues with other faculties, go through. If there's you know, contradictory, uh, and it's rare, but if it does occur, like instruction, and you aren't sure which way to go, uh, I'm kind of the mediator uh, within that. I'll be the one that uh, you can contact. And uh, uh, I, based on the experience, uh, which you do not have about, and some of you went to the baccalaureate course, will have a little different experience. But I'll probably be the best position to say, this is a good project for the aims and requirements that we have for the school. And uh, so uh, the uh, uh, areas here uh, will be, uh, that's the reason why I'm be with you the first two courses. That when you set up the project is that uh, uh, really have a good insight. And usually the lead factor, the most experienced ones, been around for a while, uh, that knows the NGS approach of teaching as well as the, uh, the knowledge about uh, the quality tools. And uh, the other faculty you have usually have uh, some uh, will have great expertise in particular areas, but may not as much in the entire NGS experience. They teach faculty or adjunct faculty or working uh, professionals come in. And uh, they'll teach the, the courses, and they'll get spun up on the projects and the application. Uh, and if, uh, uh, and so, uh, but some of them may have not taught other courses than the one that they have, and so they may not see the big picture. So I'll have the big picture uh, and help you with that. And uh, here's some things that are very important for the champions because we talked about the champion being a central point of contact. Uh, it should be somebody that has the authority to implement your recommendations. It's very important is that uh, uh, when we start selecting these projects, hey, is this something I think we could work on, uh, we could form a team on? Uh, one of the questions isn't just uh, the nature of the project, but the person who would sponsor that, either he or she, uh, needs to have the authority uh, over that project. In other words, if you say I, we have recommendations for improvement, they can implement them. They have that authority. Uh, they uh, uh, are the ones that. Uh, would be willing to spend time with you in teams uh, for the price of the, uh, of the free consulting, we in turn ask that they participate uh, with you and that they provide guidance on a regular basis. Uh, so you meet with them like once a, uh, a month or once a quarter as a team, you know, maybe talk with the, the champion. So uh, they need to be able to say, OK, I will give you the resources. I'll ensure that you got data. I'll tell the, the members of the organization that they need to cooperate with you. Uh, this is somebody that's willing to support this project. And uh, also that that person will be there. Uh, we'll talk about you know somebody that you think maybe is great, but it's going to retire in two months. Well, that may be a little bit of a jeopardy. So we'll talk about uh, the champion. And that uh, uh, they should have a stake in the process that uh, whatever project you have on typically are, are, are pretty important. Uh, they're visible. Uh, they typically, in my experience, uh, most of my teams have at least six-figure ROIs, uh, return on investments. So there are usually things that are important uh, to the champion and to the organization. And uh, these are things we'll kind of look for uh, about that. And we'll continue to, to, to coach you on that, what makes a good project, what are the type of questions you would need to ask the champion. Uh, but that's really an important aspect. Um, so here's where we are. Uh, currently, uh, we're right in the forming phase of so this course, uh, right at the very beginning of initiating a project. And we're just beginning to define what that is. So that's where you are uh, today. And uh, 
we're going to be uh, talking about uh, the rest of these things, the general concepts in our future courses, and more about the projects. And uh, uh, so let me kind of uh, uh, talk about the assignment again. You're going to have the DQ. You need to respond to that. Uh, I mean, be sure if you haven't done the learning agreement, uh, which is really a contract that you agree to not plagiarize uh, or anything else that was part of the orientation, you need to fill that out, if you will and upload that to the portal. Uh, this is a change if you're in the baccalaureate. I think now this learning uh, contract, by the way, is required for every course that we have to ensure that you just reinforce that, you know, uh, no plagiarism or you know, you write papers, it's, it's your own. Uh, so uh, there's that homework as well. But you know, get to know each other, get your bios in, answer the DQs, and then start your reading uh, and uh, start thinking about the uh, getting the the Baldrige criteria, getting the uh, start reading, particularly the core values aspect of that uh, for your paper to get queued up. So uh, I've covered a lot of stuff. I know I, you know, here we are. At, uh, been going for about an hour and forty five minutes, and you're probably kind of like a teacup, right? You know, it's got <laughs> poured up to the brim. Uh, I'm not sure if I get any more poured into it, but uh, let me stop here because I've been. Uh, going on for quite some time and, and see what questions you may have concerning anything we covered tonight. Uh, so let me turn it back over to you guys. What, what are your questions or comments that you may have? I don't know if everybody's still awake. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, I'll just put it out to the professor. This is Larry Spicer. Yeah. I was gonna wait. I was gonna wait until you kind of like class ended, but I know I'll be out of the country next week, so I'll be doing obviously my assignment, and then when I get back, I think I get back Saturday evening, I'll be able to finish the rest. So I will miss class next. The the actual audio uh, class next week uh, Wednesday. Okay. Um, and uh, for the future, by the way, uh, typically there will be uh, a review the, the course material, review the webinar when it gets posted. As I mentioned, normally you know we do it on a Wednesday. Uh, usually gets transferred over to the NGS, and usually by Friday they have the link up. Okay, uh, so you need to review that. We also do a transcript uh, of this uh, as well. And so typically, you know, it takes a little while for that to get posted, but check the, the portal and the course materials. And once you do, uh, there will be uh, typically a question uh, that at the end of the course uh, that you need to answer after you review that. And in the portal, there is a, a place that you say, OK, here's the reply. Uh, here's, here's my reply to the question. And uh, the. Uh, I can find it in this one. Uh, okay. If you missed the webinar, for instance, you'll have a question like this that says, okay, if you couldn't attend this webinar, uh, review it after you've done the recording, okay, go to the discussion forum and said, what's the least five characteristics of a good uh, MVP senior champion? All right. So you'd have to go listen to that part that I just talked about, you know, having a champion that's uh, uh, going to be there for the duration, has authority to improve, et cetera. And then you would put that response into your uh, uh, DQ. So the, if you miss it, uh, I understand. You could be on travel, you could be on deployments, or something like that. You review the, the webinar, but to ensure that you you know picked up the, the instructional material that's in here, uh, you'll have a question to respond to. Or sometimes if there's not a question, then the, the fact we give me a, a summary of what you think maybe are the key points from the webinar. So there'll be some type of a assignment. If you miss the, can't be here on Wednesday evening at eight to ten, that you have the capability to review that and then respond. Hey, give me a heads up. That's the other thing. Just give me a heads up like that. Uh, if you're not going to be here, it's just uh, just helpful. So, thanks, Larry. All right. Any other uh, comments or? Uh, Judith has a question on the chat. Let's see, what was the question? Uh, oh, how much are we talking about the same? Okay, thank you. Uh, 
think so. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll talk about the, the champion. Let me uh, address that. I believe that's the question. Is that not all of you will have projects that will go forward. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, how you would approach the champion uh, in regards to this. One is that they may not, they need to kind of know what this is about and how we use the information. For some organizations, they don't want uh, anybody from the outside working on it because it's con competition sensitive, right? Or they don't want any of their dirty laundry <laughs> aired. Because you know, a lot of times you think about it, if you're working on a project, you're working on something that's dysfunctional, but it's something that could be improved. So some organizations don't like to have that out there. Uh, and there's ways that we can deal with that. I'll cover that in much more detail. We can uh, Confidentiality is one of the things we assure. Uh, there's a statement that we will also uh, consider uh, if we have this, that uh, if a champion has concerns about the data and how it's being used, uh, uh, we have provisions that uh, you know uh, that we can uh, see if they'd be agreeable to, like redacting the information or perhaps uh, using uh, different information than the real data to uh, in some of these reports, but approximates uh, the real data. So there's a lot of different ways we can do that. Now, if uh, the, the champion, um, uh, well, it would be clear, if some of this would be kind of like, what is a, a project and how do we relate to that? We're going to cover that in this course. So don't be so concerned at this point what makes a good project or uh, is a champion. But you may start thinking about this. Uh, is there a process in here that we can improve? Is there something that is not uh, achieving its goals that's important. Is there maybe a project you are currently are involved with that may be important to improve? And um, uh, so what we'll do, as I mentioned, we'll have a nomination process. And we'll evaluate those nominations against that. And your preference, whether you want to move forward with it, and your uh, best judgment about the champion support uh, will be uh, part of the equation. And uh, we'll cover those specific areas uh, later, but I just wanted to kind of give you the framework that we'll be using. Uh, and we'll talk specifically about that criteria uh, a little bit later on. Yeah, uh, did I answer your questions? Okay. okay, good. Thanks. Yes, you uh, did. Thank you. All righty. Uh, professor, uh, this is Ron Bustos. Hi, Ron. I had a quick question about uh, what's actually due next week. I know that we were uh, you were discussing about the uh, discussion forums and the uh, academic agreements, but uh, looking online, I also see that the the quality principles paper is also due on the 29th, as well as two other dis discussion questions. Just wanted to get clarity on that. Uh, yeah, if you, here's the syllabus. Uh, uh, hold on, it looks like it may be. Let me see if I can switch over to the syllabus real quick. Uh, uh, the first assignment, what you need to do is one is the learning agreement, and, and be sure you upload that. And please go back to the portal, uh, to the orientation, and do your bios. And then uh, the overview here, assignment one, due prior to week two, is the uh, uh, research the definitions of quality, provide what your definition is of quality, if you would, also maybe give an example how you see it applied in your workplace. That would be uh, very helpful. Uh, that should be done by Sunday, and then respond to two other students by next Wednesday. Uh, so that would be your requirement you have here. Assignment two, which will be the uh, core values, uh, that will be actually due week three. So not this upcoming Wednesday, but the Wednesday after that will be the time that your first paper is due. And uh, assignment three, it will be another set of discussion questions. So you, the only thing you have is to start reading, uh, get a hold of the criteria, start reviewing that, and do the discussion questions along the learning. Uh, so and I'll in, double check the, the, the dates. As I mentioned, we have kind of uh, I want to be sure it's tracking against the syllabus. But basically, if you follow this this point, uh, only thing you have to do for this upcoming week is uh, start the readings and uh, uh, look at that. Uh, start thinking about the core values. So you get a hold of the Baldrige criteria, download it, review that. There's a set of definitions. We're going to have a, a, 
uh, discussion about uh, that in much more detail in upcoming uh, uh, session with this within this cohort. But uh, it will behoove you to get a hold of that, start re re reading that through, particularly focus on the core values, and get a hold of the tag book, and uh, 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 you'd be good to go. Um, okay. Yeah. So good. I was looking at the uh, the portal, uh, the portal, and it actually had the date for next week. So that's why I was confused. Yeah. Uh, uh, that needs to uh, the the third week. You now will that be changed in there? Okay. Okay. No worries. Thank you. you bet. All right. Uh, if you want to, I'll stay on for a while uh, after uh, we finish up tonight and answer anybody that may have individual questions. If you want to talk about anything we've covered tonight or have apprehensions uh, about any aspect, uh, give me, uh, you know, shoot me an email. Uh, I'll be glad to set up a phone call uh, that maybe work for our, our, uh, our schedules. And um, uh, I'll spend some time then after we finish tonight. Uh, if you have things that you'd like to bring up that may be more of an individual uh, nature, than uh, in, in large course. So uh, I'm excited to uh, launch in, uh, into a new adventure here. And so I thank each one of you for participating tonight. Uh, and uh, I wish you, wherever you are at, I was going to say good evening, but for some of you, it's probably good morning. <laughs> And I will uh, finish, uh, stop the recording, and then we'll uh, hang on for any individual comments or questions you may have. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, look forward to our uh, our journey over the next year. Good night.